As most of you probably already know, Lucifer, alongside a host of angels and other spiritual entities, rebelled against God quite soon after the first human was created. However, while Lucifer stands out as the villain, we don't really know much about who these other rebels were who attempted to remove the Lord from his exalted throne. Considering that about a third of Lucifer's forces were the hosts of angels in heaven, angels probably did play a significant role in this treacherous event. One of the major players of this battle against the heavens was an angel named Belial, who, along with the others, was sent straight to the depths of hell as he and his leader Lucifer failed to seize the heavens from God. Following this, much like his leader and subordinates, he figured if he couldn't ruin the heavens for God, he could corrupt the world for God's most loved creation, mankind. After all, he and Lucifer carried an abhorrence for these humans that God placed higher than them, so why stop from destroying them however they could? As such, the now demon spent many millennia corrupting and attempting to destroy mankind in a myriad of ways. In this video, we'll take a look at this fiend and how he uses greed, lust, and sloth, among other vices, to destroy the integrity of mankind. We'll learn how powerful he truly might be, as he seemed to rival the devil and sometimes even God himself. Sit tight as we unlock the mystery behind the deplorable demon that is Belial. The best starting point to begin unlocking this mystery would be with Belial's name. It might interest many of us to know that his very name already has negative undertones. In Hebrew, the word Belial referred to someone or something that lacked worth or was yokeless. And in context of the pagan religion, the name was used to represent those who dedicated themselves to pagan gods rather than the one true God. So rather than the fallen angel that we might point to, some might consider Belial to be a false god whose worshippers were people who lacked any worth whatsoever. Even in the Bible, it appears that there were several other ways that the name Belial was used to represent something evil. However, this was not referring to an evil entity per se, but a malady of the mind, as at one instance Belial was used to describe the depression that King David succumbed to following a disgraceful event. Nonetheless, more often than not, Belial maintained a reputation for wickedness and deceit because in other parts of the Bible, it's used to describe someone who seeks to perpetuate the aforementioned vices upon his fellow man. We point to the tale of a man who visited the town of Gebir, a story that is eerily similar to the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. After seeking refuge in the home of an elderly resident of the town, the other villagers who were aptly referred to as the sons of Belial surrounded the old man's house and demanded that he surrender his guest to them so that they could have his way with him. They defiled the guest's wife, which led to chaos and frenzy across the entire town. As such, it's during this incident that the evil connotation of being a son of Belial was confirmed. Another tale that refers to the wretchedness of the sons of Belial is that of Eli in the book of Samuel, the second to the last judge of Israel before the age of kings. Alas, while Eli was devout, his sons were not as they exploited their high position by diverting the best sacrificial meats for themselves while also openly fornicating with women at the entrance to the tent's meeting. Coupling their unrepentant nature with their father's leniency, God soon struck them all down and at the time of their death they were known as the sons of Belial. However, despite the use of the name Belial to refer to the wretched and the worthless among us, there are still references to Belial being a fallen angel or a demonic entity that just might be the ultimate prince of darkness. To find such cases, we must turn to the Dead Sea Scrolls, ancient Jewish and Hebrew texts and manuscripts that were discovered in the Qumran Caves in the 40s and 50s. In these texts, Belial is called the Angel of Darkness with the power to plant negative thoughts in the heart of mankind. This entity is seen as the Angel of Enmity who rejoiced in the production of wickedness as he and his agents corrupt humanity. As you can imagine, this created comparisons with the devil himself as their stories and purposes are quite similar as both prideful angels were banished for trying to take control of the heavens from God. On the other side of the coin, the Dead Sea Scrolls confirm Belial's position as a demon. In visions seen by Amram, the father of Moses, we learn of two angels who go toe-to-toe -to -toe as they battle over him. 
As he retold this account, he confirmed that one of these supernatural entities was Belial, the king of evil. Despite such a reputation for malice, some believe that Belial was an unwitting agent of God who he used to test man. This can be exemplified by the notion that when Moses tried to appeal to the Pharaoh to free his people, God used Belial to poison the heart of the Egyptian overlord. However, there are still accounts, such as the Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs, that declare Belial as God's enemy. In this text, Simeon, one of the sons of Jacob, gives details how Belial used fornication as a tool to corrupt mankind and steal their souls away from God. If we keep digging deeper, we may also find references to the fact that some believed that Belial is truly the secret ruler of the earthly plains in some other texts. In such scripts, Prophet Isaiah warned King Hezekiah that his son Manasseh, the heir to the throne, is under the influence for Belial, whose actual name is believed to be Mantanbucus, an entity who plans to steal God's subjects from him while planning to usurp his throne. However, this reign as God's rival was pretty short-lived as Jesus' crucifixion put an end to it. In the book of Revelations, it said that Jesus descended to the pits of hell where he saved many souls by granting them salvation. During this salvation mission, Jesus commanded Bartholomew, one of his twelve apostles, to subjugate Belial. It's during this subjugation that Belial revealed that he is indeed an angel named Sataniel who was a messenger of God. Unfortunately, he was to fall along with Lucifer. Following this, he became an overseer of hell and revealed that only fallen angels, not demons, could truly be in charge of the realm of darkness. Furthermore, along with the accounts of this entity being an angel or a demon, there are some accounts related to its origin. Some are even of the impression that Belial was a king who was created after Lucifer, but was first to fall before the devil. Despite his fall, he still takes the form of an angel and is known to have demons and other fallen angels under his dominion. However, in other texts, it's said that Solomon was deceived by one of his many wives or concubines to worship this demon as he slowly stepped away from the grace of God. Finally, others like the occultist Alistair Crowley considered Belial to be a powerful demon second only to Lucifer, and he said to teach the dark arts to those looking to learn such evil secrets. All in all, it's clear that whether you consider Belial to be a mere notion, a fallen angel, or a wretched demon, the entity has no love for man and would do all it can to bring mankind to disrepute as he corrupts the people with wickedness, lust, and worthlessness. It's safe to say that we must all aspire to never let this entity influence our lives. Well, that's all for today's video. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can be notified about our next videos. Trust me, you don't want to miss any of that.